In the midst of still ongoing Black Lives Matter protests, the word Karen has become increasingly popular. It's often used as a pejorative for a middle-aged white woman who takes advantage of her privilege to get her way. Notice how attention is drawn particularly to the subject's identity. With the way it's popularly tossed around these days, often by minorities, isn't this label just another example of a racist or sexist stereotype? What sparked the latest wave of Karens is arguably this video from May 25th, where a middle-aged white woman called the police on a black man, accusing him of threatening her and her dog. The only real threat to the poor dog was the cunt choking it. Later on, the man said, that's when her inner Karen fully emerged. Indeed, she checks all the identity boxes and acts not only entitled, but consciously uses her status as a white woman as a weapon against the man who clearly has reason to fear the police given his own identity. No doubt the woman here is despicable, but is calling her a Karen racist or sexist? Before we answer that, let's first answer some shit arguments. Those lines of reasoning so bad, you might as well go birdwatching in outer space. First shit argument, Black people can't be racist. Quite popular among racist minority advocates these days is the redefinition of racism to include only bigotry by those who have institutional power. This issue deserves its own separate video, but for now I'm gonna go as far as to say, your definition of racism is useless. In any case, Karen could still be considered sexist, so our question still applies. In this context, I'm going to use the traditional definition, prejudiced against people based on race or gender. In the same vein as the first, a second shit argument came in May from the Washington Post's Karen Adia, a black woman. Okay. I guess they thought being named Karen and also being a black woman somehow makes you an expert on intersectional everything. To the point, Miss Adia said, Calling the Karen meme the new n-word or asserting that it is a sexist slur only trivializes actual violence and discrimination that destroys lives and communities. Right. Um, let's just play a game of Name, name That Fallacy. <laughs> Miss Adia's claim is that Considering Karen a racist or sexist slur does a disservice to real forms of oppression. Um... You do realize that things can come in degrees, right? Like, your argument is like me responding to the fact that America's coronavirus cases are really bad by saying that minimizes the fact that Chile has it even worse. For now. This is clearly an appeal to worse problems, or as it's properly called, the fallacy of relative privation. We'll address Miss Adia's claim in a more substantive manner later as well. Finally, the criticism that no word is inherently racist. Not that this line of reasoning is actually invalid. When I say the word nigger in an academic context, that hardly makes me racist. Meanwhile, regular words like alien can easily be used in a racist manner. In this video though, we're talking about whether the word as a general label is a slur. But as all three shit arguments can teach us, context matters. So, in what context is a word generally racist? Well, to find the building blocks of a racist slur, let's take a look at the most basic racist slur there could be. Nigga, 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 nigga. The word comes from the Spanish word negro, which means... Black. That's it. The n-word is just a simple observation that the target is black. The implication, then, is that being black is the insult. Of course, the key to all this is that the speaker must intend to be offensive. To be clear, you can say racist things They're without explicitly drugs. intending They're to disparage, but that requires They're a more rapists. coherent and message than just a slur. Good but the point is that if a person is not racist, nothing they say can be racist either since racism relies on actual prejudice. We're forced to only rely on what people say because we can't read minds, but when we ask whether a word is racist, we're actually inquiring about whether the person who speaks the words has and reflects racist sentiments. So let's go back to the definition of the word to see if we can't apply what we've learned about intent. As we've already established, Karens are white middle-aged women. 
but the component I'm more interested in is the sense of entitlement and conscious use of privilege. When the word Karen is used, the primary criticism can be directed at either the target's identity or their behavior. Obviously, if your context is that a woman's identity leads her to act entitled, that's obviously racist and sexist. But what if it's the other way around? In the case of Central Park, the Please woman relies on racial stereotypes to get her way. You might expect that the word Karen can't be racist because it's a criticism of a Karen's racism. But even if you're responding to racist behavior, there's nothing stopping you from being racist right back. Additionally, the word Karen isn't always, or even usually, used to refer to a racist, just an idiotic white woman. We're gonna have to be more specific. Any potentially non-racist usage of the word Karen focuses on how privilege gained by a white woman's identity affects her behavior. As evidenced by the justice system, in American society people tend to treat whites with more sympathy than darker skinned people. This bias is even greater in favor of women over men as well. Under this framework, Karens are those who consciously use an intersectionally informed strategy as a weapon. The word then would be directed at one's sense of entitlement rather than identity, and her race and gender would be an unprejudiced explanation for why she acts that way. Aha! So it's not racist or sexist after all. Great! You're a Karen, and you're a Karen, and you're not a Karen- Not so fast. Huh? We have to remember that just because we're specifically targeting the behavior of a Karen doesn't mean we aren't still attaching stereotypes. It still implies that a person's whiteness or femaleness enables her to be a worse person. Consider the word beaner, which is the simple observation that Mexicans eat a lot of beans. Still racist. Besides, in casual usage of the term, we're not really thinking about the deeper meanings of everything we say. It's usually more along the lines of That white chick's a real bitch! Such an insult, but aimed more particularly at an identity group, matches the criteria for racist or sexist pretty well. Which brings me back to my criticism of Karen Adia's argument that racism must be historical. That line of reasoning hinges on the idea that all white people today can be held responsible for the actions of some white people in the past. In reality, bigotry in the past doesn't excuse counter-bigotry in the future. You might as well blame modern Germans for the Holocaust. No amount of language policing will rectify the past. It's a racial debt that can never be repaid. Holding our words and ideas to different standards based purely on skin color as Adia does is the precise definition of racism. As Adia sums up her argument, To invent oppression when none is happening to you? Well that is peak care and behavior. <laughs> oh, the irony. This is coming from a writer who thinks America is still patriarchal and inherently racist. This is coming from someone so satisfied about accruing intersectional oppression points that she'll pick fights with white women, black men, everybody. Come on, just admit it. For some reason you think being one of the 23 million black women in America is some achievement to be proud of, and you want some trophy for that. Fuck off, the racist and sexist one is you. Setting aside Miss Adia's intersectional pity party, by all conventional standards, the word Karen in its commonly used form is racist and sexist. But don't worry, there's a silver lining. Karen may be a bigoted word we should probably stay away from, but remember how only an actual racist can say actually racist things? Well, as long as you're not actually racist, nothing you actually say will be racist either. Technically. Nobody will know and they'll all assume you're a bigot, but you'll know in your heart that you are cancelled unfairly. Well, guess I'm a towing this identity politics line once again. I try to be aware of certain advantages and differences certain groups might generally experience without falling into the habit of trapping individuals into monolithic boxes or thinking the world has it out for a specific group of people. Intersectionality is a useful tool, but it seems to always be either ignored completely or abused by brainless social justice warriors. Don't know how that name turned into a bad thing. Anyway, let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Besides that, I'll once again plug my original soundtrack, link in the description, and bye. I'm and I approve this message.